and take two. Hi, everybody. Michael DeVellis here. And I'm excited today to talk about this idea of moving forward. Um, as I was saying, one of the things I have been hearing a lot of since this pandemic started was the way people felt about their lack of certainty. The way people felt about the fact that they didn't know not only what was next, but when it would be next and what it would mean when it was next. And I think that that's a really terrifying thing. Um, I think one of the things that we know as an industry is that uncertainty and maybe a little bit of stress about work or when work is coming next or getting the next bride or getting the next project, that comes with the, the business, man. That just comes with the deal. It's what we are in. It's, we, there's no fixing that. There's no taking that away. Um, one of the things I loved um, about having the opportunity to speak to so many you know, important and inspirational artists over my career in this industry is the fact that I can say to you guys without a doubt that it is not only you know, a makeup artist who's just starting out or a makeup artist who's working in a, you know, in a very competitive town like New York or a town without a lot of certain types of work like a Midwest, you know, the central US town. Nobody feels secure. It doesn't matter if you're an award winner or you've got covers of Vogue or doing big celebrities for the Met Gala. There is so little uncertainty in our industry and there's so much shift and change in our industry that even before this pandemic, there were a lot of us who, who worried constantly. I mean, we're always hustling, right? We're always hustling. One of the things I, I may, you may have heard me say before is when I start any of my programs with students, whether it's at Cosmics or Makeup First or Makeup Forever Academy or MUD, when I'm speaking to a student group, I ask them, you know, first question I say is who's here because they want to get rich? And I hope no one raises their hand. And then I say, okay, who's here because they want to become famous? And I hope no one raises their hand. And sometimes they do, and then most times they don't all. And then I say, good, because you're not going to get rich and you're not going to get famous being a makeup artist, but you're going to wake up every single day and do something that you're passionate about. And there's no better feeling than that in the world than to love what you do as a job and love your craft and love your career and, and be passionate about what you get to do every day. But then I also follow that with, I said, okay, so now that we've established you're not going to get rich and famous and it's passion base, how long do you think it takes before you feel like comfortable? Like you don't worry about the next job. And I'll hear questions like a year or two years or 10 years. And I'll say, great answer, great answer, great answer. And wrong, wrong, and wrong. And you're, you're never going to feel confident and secure. You're never going to feel like you have it set because we never know when the next job is coming. We never know. It's part of our industry. It's part of who we are. Well, that's all fine and well. And we can be here to inspire you at the powder group and bring you together and to give you yeah. great inspirational thoughts and, and ideas. But what ends up happening is COVID. <laughs> and then all of that stress about, will I work? When will I work next? I don't think I'm ever going to have a job again. Then it gets really real, doesn't it? Because not only is it your world that's being affected, but it's also the entire industry. So when the entire industry stops and you've already been struggling, whether you accept and realize that the struggle is a part of it or not, you were struggling, you were pushing, you were hustling, you were getting that job, you're doing great in your career, but you were looking down the road and going, six months, I don't have stuff on the calendar, I gotta figure that out. And then everything stops. There's two things to remember. One, everything stopped, right? It wasn't just New York. It wasn't just LA. It wasn't just Kansas City. It was everything. It wasn't just the US. It was the world. Everything. Never in the history of the world has anything like this happened, especially in a time when we are so interconnected through digital means and through um, you know, the fact that we travel so much and we know other places and we know people in other places to see everything grind to a halt was really terrifying for everybody, including me. Um, my role, and I hope I'm okay at it some of the time, most of the time, hopefully, 
is to keep you guys moving, to kind of go, okay, I, I kept saying I'm the court jester during COVID. I'm like, hey guys, look over here. Da, 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 da. Look over here, pay attention to me. Don't worry about no work, look over here and make you think and make you do group partnership pro, you know, um, goal setting and make you take programs and give you stuff to do. But the whole time I'm also going, shit, I hope this like, I don't know how long this is gonna last and I'm glad I can be a, a catalyst or a platform for people to come together but I also have to be realistic about this idea that, that we don't know if it's gonna be two months or three months or four months or six months when it started. When I was posting you know, little graphics that say breathe, because we weren't breathing, were we? We were, we, were, we were shutting down, closing down, we were pulling blankets up over our eyes and going like, oh, I can't do this. So I tried to get you out of that. I tried to move you forward. And I tried to get you thinking about what's next. Well, guess what? It's been a few months now. It's been like five months since that first time we started thinking about this in early March. And as we start going into the fall, we don't really see an end in sight. We know that in some places people are getting back to work in certain ways. We had that great session about getting back to work on Monday, um, how to do it safely. But at the end of the day, what we have to realize is that we can do all those things and there's gonna be other factors involved that have nothing to do with how we are behaving and what we are doing. It's not gonna have anything to do with what our brides wanna do or our producers wanna do or our client wants to do. It's gonna to have to do with what the greater good is for our industry and beyond for society. So we don't have any answers. We still don't have any answers. It is August 5th. First of all, how the heck did it become August 5th? That is insane. It's crazy that it's August 5th. It is August 5th and we don't have an answer for questions we have been asking for the last four or five months. So what my hope is, is that, you know, V said it yesterday. She said, I'm paraphrasing, but take this time and learn, take this time and create, take this time and develop relationships. Make sure you're checking in with people. These are the things you have to do when you have this downtime. And we've been encouraging that all along. But there's a point where you start to feel, and this is why we're doing Forward Together today as a start to summer school. This is why on August 5th, I thought it was important to say, okay, okay, we're getting a little, we're getting a little stir crazy. We're getting a little frustrated. We're getting a little, okay, I'm back to that idea of when this is, when's it gonna happen? What's next? When, when am I gonna work? When am I gonna work like I used to work? And so what I don't want us to do is get stuck. I don't want us to stop again. I don't want us to go back to way maybe we felt when this all first started because we're seeing such difficult numbers coming out of, of the news cycle. And we're getting, we're getting frustrated when we see people post pictures of a high school in Georgia, not social distancing, or a party in the Hamptons, not social distancing, or a house party in LA where there's a shooting, but no one was social distancing distancing and no one was wearing masks and we're getting we're going like what the fuck is wrong with people why are you screwing it up for us stop screwing it up for us so what we have to do is we have to protect ourselves right we have to create a cocoon in some ways while also being able to outreach into what is i'll call the the, the outside of our cocoon outside of the safety of the people that we gather with we connect with our communities not just tpg but other communities as well and we have to say to ourselves, how do we at the very least make sure we are doing our best right now? Because I don't know about you, but I am really looking forward to gathering in a space together again. I'm really looking forward to a hug. I'm really looking forward to the, to the, you know, the smell of makeup. I never get to play with, I never play with makeup. I wish I was in the room at Makeup 101. Like I wish we were gathering and we're not. So what do we do? What do we do? So, when I was writing this program out and developing it, I thought to myself, well, there's a few things. Number one, I think we have to realize, and this is very cliche things, right? That we're stronger as a community as we are as individuals, right? This community is made up of so many strong women and strong men, powerhouses, so much strength. But we are still stronger when we are supported by other people who are on the same wavelength and on the same path as we are with the same perspective as we are. So understanding that, you know, and it's a bit of a moot point to everybody on this session, because I'll tell you that when I open up a screen and I jump on and I see 
at Klein and I see Vamika and I see Pauline and I see Dorothy and I see Elise and I see Erica and I see Odalie and I go, hey, wait a minute. I'm preaching to the choir, aren't I? Because y'all are paying attention. You are gathering, you are coming together. You're on the sessions when you can come in. You come to the paid ones, you come to the free ones. It's all good, come to what you can. But come, be a part of it because part of this, and we'll talk about this in a minute, is the idea of connectivity. The idea of seeing each other and making sure you know that there is support. It's one thing to be on that Facebook group and go, TPG is the best. Thank you, Michael, for creating the powder group. I love our TPG community. I don't know if I've gotten through this without TPG. That's amazing. But we're going to talk about what you have to actually do to make that work and be a part of that and be a part of the fact that other people are relying on others to keep moving forward. I want to talk about community for a minute. Because I think that when we think about community, I always, you know, think of TPG Pro first, right? That is my heart. It is the, I'm, I'm, you know, I am so interconnected with it. TPG Pro is me. I am TPG Pro that that is my key community. But what other communities are we a part of? Maybe you're part of a, a, a other social LGBTQ community, or maybe you're a part of the union, or maybe you're a part of a, a religious organization, a church, a synagogue, and that's a community. So when we think about community and we think about this idea that we're stronger as community and when we look forward into what is unknown, what is unknown, it certainly feels better to be with a bunch of other people who are feeling somewhat similarly, whether it's because we have the same belief system or we have the same career or we have the same social things we're interested in. It's irrelevant. It's just finding community. I want you to think about this. You know, we had this crazy storm yesterday on the East Coast, and I couldn't see like out my window 30 feet because the rain was so crazy. If you're at, you know, you're on a boat in the fog, you're on the boat in the fog, and you're by yourself. That's pretty terrifying. You're on the boat in the fog with a whole bunch of other people. You're all scared, but you feel supported. You feel like there's people around you who can help you. You might not be able to see what's in front of you you but at the same time you know that there are people there to help you and i think that's an important thing to think about we don't none of us zero people i don't care who you are who you are in the industry how long you've been doing work or what kind of work you do i don't care whether you're working again or you're not working again you cannot tell me what's going to happen in two weeks you cannot tell me what's going to happen in three months you cannot tell me what's going to happen in january you cannot tell me no one can i can't tell you you can't tell me so that level of unknown is terrifying it's terrifying. And I know I can keep sitting in front of my laptop and looking at you guys and saying, hey guys, glad you're here with us. Stay strong, keep moving. Let's learn about this. Let's focus on this. Let's set goals. But six months down the road from now, we're gonna be thinking differently again. And we have to adjust and we have to shift, but we need each other to help through that process. So this idea of community um, also has to do with how we develop because if we, I mean, I've, I've quoted this, this quote and I've put, published this meme so many times, it's exhausting now for you guys, I'm sure. But the African proverb that speaks to, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. It is such a powerful and meaningful quote. And it truly represents for me what you guys are and who you are, not only to each other, but to the industry. I'm really proud we've had so many new members join us in the last little bit. And some of the nicest messages I get are from our new members. And they are saying things like, I wish I joined the powder group sooner. I, I'm so glad that, that I feel so supported now. And that means a huge amount to me because they're not saying, Michael, thank you for supporting me. They're saying, thank you for having TPG Pro exist because TPG Pro is supporting me. That's you guys, that's all of us. And for me, that's one of the reasons that I speak about things like turning your camera on when you're on a Zoom session, um, making sure that we can see your face. I had, I, it's funny, and I don't think any of, um, any of my speakers will um, get mad at me, but on Monday, you know, I have people saying to me on the getting back to work safely session, this is the first time I put makeup on in a couple months because they're just kind of hanging out and doing their Zooms. Like they're having their meetings and they're, but they got gussied up for you guys. That feels pretty good, right? Cause they were, they were wanting to be, a, they wanted to, they wanted to get back to normalcy. They want you guys to be excited about moving forward. 
And, and so I think that that was really special. And I think that if, if you, you know, that session was done in webinar format because it's a much easier session because then everyone sees everyone and there's no speaker. It's a much easier session to, to broadcast so you can see all the speakers at once. And, you know, I thought to myself, the only thing missing is I really want these, these folks to be able to see this community. And V and I talked about this and she said, are we going to, am I going to see them? Because she does big events and sometimes they're webinars format, which means she doesn't see them. And I said, yeah. And she said, oh, I, I don't know if, I'll, will I be distracted? And I said, you won't be distracted. I said, it's great. And afterwards she messaged me and said, it was so nice to see everybody. It was so nice to see everybody. That's about community and that's about connectivity. So there's four things I want to talk about today. And I'm really going to stay within an hour. Um, not from now, an hour from when I started. <laughs> I know you guys have a long day with us today. I'm not trying to keep you with, I'm giving you plenty of time to eat and use the washroom in between. So the first, there's four things, connectivity, support, development, and execution. Those are the four things I'm gonna to touch on today. And those four things are really important um, because those are four pieces of this idea of developing a, not only a path, but also a process for moving forward. Now, there's a little bit of a difference between this session and what we've been talking about in past sessions that I've done during the pandemic. What we've done in a lot of cases, even though when we did the goal setting session, I had you partner up with people. A lot of you guys on this session call right now, in this session right now, were part of that. You were partnered up with someone, you were responsible for someone else, you engaged, you worked together, you met, we did another meeting, you did another part of it. I kept giving you new stuff to do over a four week period, but it was really about you supporting one artist. But really at the end of that, the goal setting exercise there was about you 100% getting your goals in place. Getting next, another program I did was about the idea of you getting from point A to point B, giving thought to all these different things. A Little bit of duplication in some of my programs because there are some things that are super important. But the difference between getting next or a goal setting session where you're focused on yourself and this session, which is called what well, again, forward together, is that this is about how we can support each other and be supported. Now, I had somebody the other day say to me, I want to have coaching sessions with you. And I, I said, okay. I said, but I just gave you some coaching. I gave you this program. You just did this program. You've been doing a lot. Like, why do you need, why do you feel that you need a coaching session or a series of coaching sessions? She's like, I just want you to, I need to have a check-in. And I said, well, that's amazing. And I can, you can pay me if you want to do coaching. I think that's great. I need revenue, please. Some guys pay me something. I need money. I need to be able to support you. So I need to be supported. But I said no to this person. I said, no, you, you, this isn't what you need. You just need to start moving and start taking action. You have an entire community of people who are supporting you. You have an entire community of people who you can also support. The idea of connectivity, that first topic I wanna to think about, um, you know, it's a little bit difficult for me to, to validate speaking about this and saying it's, you know, I know for the last 17 years that I've had the powder group, I've said, I don't, I don't want to talk to you online. I want to use Facebook group and I want to use, you know, connectivity through social media to stay connected, but that's not where I want to create a relationship with you. That's not where I want us to really deepen our connectivity because I want you to come together in a room. I want you to be in a room together. So now we can't, we can't. Uh, and even in the circumstances where we can, it feels very different than the type of, the manner I should say in which we would connect in the past. So connectivity, we think of now as completely digital in most cases, right? In most cases, our connectivity is 100% digital. We are staying connected only through Zooms and through social media. But I think there's something else 
that we're not, not really focusing on. And I know that this doesn't speak to everyone. <clears throat> Excuse me. I know that there are people who are making this effort and doing these things, but I think that we have to take the initiative and we have to take the initiative now to connect with people on a deeper level for a number of reasons. I don't give therapy. We are not therapists at the powder group. I don't give financial advice, tax advice, health advice or therapy. Um, but however, I'm going to say this, it really is a difficult thing to be alone, not only physically, but feel alone energetically because all of your connections happen in front of a computer screen. I also am the first person, and those of you who follow me on my personal social media know that I do not take social distancing or mask wearing lightly at all. And I am very adamant about it and I'm very vocal about it. But there are safe ways to gather. There are safe ways to come together. I can think of James and Orali and Jeremy and a, and a few folks going out and going to protest and they were staying social distanced and they were wearing masks and they were being careful and they were being hygienic. And there's a way to come together. And there's a way to do it in a way that works and makes sense. We've got a lot of people in this, this community who are close to others physically, geographically, except Elise. Elise, you're the farthest one from anybody. You're like way the fuck out in nowhere in El Paso. Um, having said that, <laughs> um, if you can, get in front of other artists, get in front of other people, get in front of other community members, whether they're TPG or whether they are your church or a social group, get in front of others, get physically present with other people, do it as, as absolutely safely as you can, but there isn't any reason you can't gather within the realm and the rules of your state. If it, it's no more than 10 people socially distant in an outdoor space, then get 10 artists in your market, go sit around in a park and connect. Um, it makes a difference and it makes people feel not alone. And we know that mental health issues are affected in an extreme way during this crisis. Um, people who have isolation issues or other issues about themselves, this is a very difficult thing. And so we add on it and we compound the idea of, I don't know what's gonna happen with my career to I've been alone in a box for months. And I'm terrified to step outside. So be a support system. Now that's the extreme saying gather. How weird for me to say gather when I'm saying we're not doing makeup one-on-one -on -one in person. We're not doing this in person, but you can find ways. We're gathering with, with our family in a safe way. Find ways outside of your community of artists, but also find connectivity within your community because it's important also for us to understand that it's not just us who are going through so many challenges. If I said, I'm gonna give everybody here five minutes to talk to this group of what, what they're struggling with right now, let me tell you, by the time I got to the sixth or seventh person, everything would have been probably said that the rest of you would say. We're all struggling the same things. We're all struggling the same way. We're all hustling in the same way. We're all having difficulty. So that connectivity that connectivity, not Michael saying those things to you and you nodding and saying, yep, but you saying them to each other. In the way I forced you to do in the beginning, if you were on that goal setting session, I made you connect over four weeks with someone. Take that initiative to connect. If you can't do it in person, or if you want to help Elise out, out in El Paso, get on the phone. Get on the phone. I'm not talking about Zoom cocktail hour. We all love Zoom cocktail hour. Who likes Zoom cocktail hour? Raise your hand. Ooh, I love Zoom. I like Face. I hated FaceTime before the coronavirus, but now we do FaceTime cocktail hour and Zoom cocktail hour. I'm talking to friends all over the world. I'm talking to you guys. That connectivity, whatever for whatever reason, is really important. The other thing I want to say is this. Connectivity requires that both the recipient and the giver of their connectivity are willing, able, and, and ready for that connectivity. It also means that when I'm being connected with, it is in a way that I feel I welcome and I want to be connected with in that way. Let me give you an example. We know that there are people that are struggling. We know that there are people going through a lot. We know that we're all in that same boat. 
But sometimes when we have someone who's reaching out to us and it's just for the sake of complaining or, or saying the same kind of thing over and over again, or, or I'm going to use the phrase bitching and whining and moaning. And I'm not just saying like, oh my God, I'm not working. I'm saying whatever they're saying is just always aggressively negative. And I'm, let's say I, I'm the first person to be negative and aggressive online about Trump, about people who don't wear masks, about people who are rude to businesses who are trying to get them to social distance, all these things. I can be very vocal. I can be very aggressive. Um, don't do what I do on social media. Um, but I want you guys to think about that. Are there people, think about this. There Are there people even in our own TPG Pro community who when you see their posts in personal or in the TPG Pro group that you kind of go, there, there he is at it again or there she is at it again, same old, same old. And it doesn't make you wanna connect with them, it makes you wanna put a block or an unfollow up because you just can't take it anymore. So understand that connectivity has to be accepted by someone because they want to connect with you. They want to make that connection. I'm not saying don't be honest, I'm not saying don't be clear, but what I am suggesting is this. Find the positives and share positives. I mean, I, I, I'm not, I didn't do this this morning because it was this session I was having, but randomly I got a, I saw a thread about the penguin colony and I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. There's more penguins in this place than ever before, but the ice caps melting and everything else is going to shit. And, but that's kind of cool. So I posted that and I was like, that's not very exciting, but it's also at least positive. When we are surrounded by so much stress and so much weird energy, and we are dealing with so much politically, socially, and from a physical health standpoint right now, those people who can bring some joy to our life, that feels pretty good. I, I don't think she'll mind me saying this, but I was on a, a coaching, a one-on-one -on -one with Etsia, my friend, the other day, and I said, among other things, one of the comments I said to her was, thank you for keeping us joyful. Thank you for making us laugh. Thank you for making us laugh because it is a tough time. It's a tough time. And when you're going through a tough day and you see one of Etsy's fucking ridiculous posts, you kind of have to be like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> come on girl, get it together. But it's, it's amazing. And when you know that there is someone who adds stress to your life and you see their email come in or you see a text from them, that's not exciting. That's not exciting. It doesn't feel good. Connectivity can be blocked, can't it? We can social distance. I mean, we can social media block, but can we also energetically block people? Maybe those are people who need us and need to be a part of our realm and our world because they need our support, which is gonna be the next thing we talk about. But what I want you to think about is this, for connectivity, there's a few questions I want you to ask yourself and I want you to do this as an exercise later. I want you to ask yourself, who are you connecting with? And I want you to ask yourself, why? Why are you connecting with them? Is it because they're a positive person in your life that helps you get through stuff? Is the connectivity because they bring you joy? Is the connectivity because as a, an empath and a healer and a teacher, you need to be able to do that so you attract yourself to people who need that from you? Is the connectivity because you just feel like you don't know what else to do other than keep trying? And I think that one of the things about just connecting for connecting's sake is sometimes it comes across with a lack of authenticity. And I think that with a lot of people, and I get this happening a few couple times, two, three times a week, somebody out of nowhere, who I haven't talked to for the whole pandemic, messages me or emails me. And I think to myself, oh, was I that low on their list of people to check in with that it's five months later and they're just checking in? No, we're all super busy, it's all amazing. I think that when you think about this idea of authentic connection. It's that idea that it's real, right? Authenticity is real. It's real, it makes something real. And one of the things, I can be called a lot of things that are not positive words, controlling, bitchy, all kinds of stuff. Stacy, don't even start, you're smiling. Um, but I'm authentic. 
I am authentic guys. You're going to, what you see is what you get. That's it. When I reach out to you, sometimes I'm, I'm a slap on the wrist, Papa. And sometimes I'm a, Oh my God, I heart you so much. Thank you so much. Fake and feel so good, but you're going to get what you're going to get. Cause that's what you're supposed to get. Cause I'm authentic 100% period all the time. Love it or leave it. And I think that that authenticity sometimes feels inauthentic for people. When sometimes people feel like they're forcing it, that can't be. You have to truly just let authenticity be. If you miss someone, a message that says, hey, I just want you to know I've missed working with you. I know this is, it's been a few months since this all went down and I know everyone's worried about getting back to work, but I just want you to know that I, I think of you, I know we haven't reached out and I miss working with you. I miss working with you. It, it kind of sucks. This sucks. Can't wait to see you again. That sounds authentic, doesn't it? It sounds real. And it's not ever going to come across as authentic if it isn't authentic, guys. So ask yourself why you're connecting to people. Asking yourself, who are you connecting with already? And ask yourself also within that why, am I connecting with this person or this business or this producer for them or for me? For them or for me. I had somebody, this is not me fishing for support um, or connectivity. I have plenty of connectivity. <laughs> but I had, I had dinner with someone a few years ago. And during this dinner, he's an artist. During this dinner, I went into coach mode because that's what I do without thinking about it. And he said, stop. And I said, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like, I can't help myself. He goes, no, no, no all great. What can I do for you? How can I support you? And I literally got chills. I almost got emotional. I was like, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, that's not a good question. No, 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 no. I provide support. You don't provide me support. He goes, no, no, no. When's the last time somebody said to you, how are you doing? And I said, well, people ask me all the time. Nope, 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 nope. No. He stopped me. He said, no. When is the last time somebody reached out to you, touched base with you, connected with you authentically to say, how are you? Are you okay? I know this isn't easy for you either because we were going through a different difficult time and some other things and uh, we were discussing that. And I said, thank you. I just said, thank you. That's a great question. I'm good. And he, he said, okay, good, bad answer, Michael. Good is not a good answer, but I'll let you go. I'll let you go on that one. I'll let you get by with it. And I thought to myself after that meeting, I thought, wow, it's kind of crazy. My connectivity is very push focused. It's very push based. I connect out. When a client needs me, they connect to me and then I connect back out. But if I want to do something with Scandinavia, I reach out to Deb and say, hey, I'm connecting with you. Do you want to do something? In turn, in all fairness, Deb will reach out to me and say, hey, I've got an idea. And that's a great connectivity because we're sharing together. But I think that's an important thing to think about. Why are you connecting with people? Is it for you to be supported or is it so that you can be a support system? That's important. So I wanna talk about support. One of the big problems I find with this word support, and this, is, this sounds like I'm kind of being a dick, but there are a lot of people out there asking for support a lot, aren't there? You just look at your social media feed and please know that I'm not criticizing this, but Somebody's not well, they ask for prayers. Somebody is having a hard time, they start a GoFundMe. Somebody is launching a, a product, they ask you to buy it. There's a lot of people out there asking for your support, aren't there? Does anyone disagree with that? There's a lot of people out there asking for your support. Some of us. I ask you for your support every single day. I ask you for your support when I say, hey guys, TPG Summer School tomorrow. Come and be a part of it. Well, it sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? That's not me supporting. That's not me asking for your support. That's me supporting you. Of course, that's me supporting you. I'm giving you a free program. But isn't it also you supporting the powder group and you supporting me? Let's say, and I'm going to keep talking about Deb because she's my girl and because she's on with us. Let's say Deb Millie was here and there were five. Hi, baby. Mwah. Um, let's say Deb Millie was here and there were six people, me and Deb Millie. We'd have a lovely time. We would have me and Etsia and, and Bamika and Pauline. And we all just chill, hang out a little bit, talk. Dorothy pop in. We'd just have a, a, a lovely time. 
but it would be a different experience as a sponsor of this event, wouldn't it? If there were six people being exposed to this program versus the 70 or so that are on it now with us. So when I'm saying to you, and I'm promoting a free program, yeah, when you're paying 20 bucks to come to my marketing your career now session on Sunday, you know what I need? I need 20 times a thousand people. That would be really nice. I'm not going to get that. But 20 times a thousand, I'd be good. I can give you lots of more free stuff. But the problem is I'm asking you to do stuff for free. Come on in, be a part of this because your support allows me to also then support Scandinavia as a sponsor, doesn't it? Scandinavia support to the powder group is in turn support to you as an artist community. So when you think about this, I want you to think about support in this way. Number one, are you asking for what you need or are you asking for what you want? Because right now we all need revenue. We need energetic, emotional support. But really what else do we need? I mean, it used to be the cover of a great magazine or that thousand dollar bride is what we needed, right? Now we just need a job. We need a client. We just need a client. So our needs have shifted and changed, but ask yourself, what is it that I need from a support standpoint? Cause I don't know. I can't necessarily say I'm going to give you a job tomorrow, but I can say, I'm going to be here to support you. I can be here to support you. So, I think about this a lot because my job is support. It's just, it's my job. And my career has been built on support since my days at Mac and my days at Makeup Forever and everything I've done. Artist by Timothy Prano as a booker, all the things I've done in my career, I've been as a support to others, as a service provider to others. But then I think to myself, what is it that I need as well? What support do I need? Well, I ask for it all the time. I do ask for it. And I've got Alice on is on from Makeup Forever. Alice can tell you, I ask for support every time I need it. If I need something from Alice and Makeup Forever, I'm going to message Alice and go, hey, first and foremost, importantly, how are you doing? Hope you're doing safe and well. Everything's so crazy. So I know this is probably a no, but you guys who've read 10 words, you know my favorite word is long shot. Love a long shot. I throw long shots at Alice more than I throw long shots at anybody. Alice is in a big LVMH Makeup Forever company, and she's got to jump through hoops to give us support. And we are so grateful for Makeup Forever and in particular for Alice and all she does for our pro community. Um, but I'm going to ask for support when I need it because I know from me to provide the support I need to provide, I need support from others. So thank you, Alice. And Thank you, Deb, and thank you to all of our, our sponsors and all the people who support us. I have no problem asking for support. I have no problem asking for it. I think a lot of times people think about, well, I don't want to be a bother. I, you know what? I don't want you to be a bother, <laughs> to be honest with you. I don't want you to be a bother, so don't be a bother. But you know what? I think that if Erica Vermin messaged me and said, hey, Michael, I need something from you. I need some support. And I think in my head, and it happens in a split second, oh my God, that's my heart. That's my Erica Vermin. That's my girl who anytime I've needed her has jumped up and, and taken care of me. Anytime I've asked for anything, I've jumped up and taken care of me. Anytime I've said, would you mind, I didn't even have to finish the sentence. And she says, when, where, what? Do you think if Erica Vermin messages me and said, hey, I need some support, what is the first thing I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go, what, where, when? Tell me what you need. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, if support is not mutual, like in a relationship, like in a boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, 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 husband, husband, if a support system is not mutual, if it is not, I'm giving and getting support together at the same time, we're both equal in this. Do you stay in that relationship? I hope you don't. I hope you don't. And I hope if you ever feel that I am asking for more than I'm giving, that you don't stay in this relationship. But I give you my commitment that I'm always gonna try my best to give more than I ask for in every way, shape, and form. So support is incredible, provided that it's mutual. I think we have to think about what does someone expect from us from a support standpoint? We expect different things from different people in our lives. We expect different things from different communities. 
We expect one thing from a religious community. We expect one thing from a professional community. We expect one thing from a social justice community. We expect a different thing from our familial community, right? All different expectations, but expectations nonetheless. Expectations nonetheless. So if you can get it in your head, what are the things that, that I expect from others? And what are the things that others expect from me? Because again, this session is not called, how do I move forward? It's forward together. So the most important thing here is that connectivity, make it mutual. You do the outreach, they do the outreach. That connection has to be real, it has to be authentic. The only way to get to the support level is connectivity. If you are not connected, how many of you have had someone reach out to you for something, whether it's um, to they're launching a new product they want you to buy, or they are um, looking for work, or they need something, and you say to yourself, my God, I have not heard from you in so long, I, I can barely remember who you are, but yet you're reaching out to me as if we're best friends. Because, but we've had no connectivity. I'm not kidding. When I say probably a couple times a month, two or three times a month in this past four or five months since COVID started, I've had people out of nowhere, people, brands that haven't done a thing with me and don't even respond to emails when I email them about stuff we're doing. Don't respond to emails. But yet now I want to know how I can promote their hand sanitizer. <laughs> I'm like... No one needs another hand sanitizer. We got, we got our cinema secrets. We got our jowl. We're good. But they are, not, they are ready to tell me how important what they've got to sell is because they now need my support. But what, does it miss? what did it miss? It missed connectivity. You can't ignore me for five years and then jump in and pretend we're best friends. Have you had that relationship thing happen to you? Have you had people jump in and pretend like, oh my God, how have you been? How's it, how's it been five years already? Like, I don't know. <laughs> you haven't called me. I haven't called you. I guess I don't like you that much. I don't know. I have no idea. But let me, let me throw Deb and Alice into the mix. If Deb or Alice said, hey, Makeup Forever or uh, Scandinavia, we're doing a new hand sanitizer. I'm going to go, great. You know what? My community loves the shit out of hand sanitizer. Let's talk. But without connectivity, guys, without connectivity, which also takes relationship level, right? Connectivity means I'm, I'm in a relationship with someone. Without that connectivity, that support isn't going to be there. It's not going to come. Not going to come. Um, I want to talk about this idea of development. So we talked about connectivity. We talked about support and talked about development. <clears throat> so when we talk about development, this is not about creating something like, you know, Debbie Zoller developed the Mentors Project. Um, you know, uh, an artist develops a product line. This is about you developing, moving yourself forward, going from wherever you are into something else. Just put your hand in front of the screen. If you have in some way, shape or form in the last four months or so since COVID started, started to look at other things to do and create and make and do for revenue other than what you initially started out in this industry doing, which is makeup artistry. So if you've done anything else, show me your hand. Making masks, selling a product. All right, Hera's raising her hand. We've got a lot of people raising their hands. So that is survival mode, isn't it? A little bit of that survival mechanism, but also I'm not gonna lie to you. I've had some people message me and say, you know, I started making masks because I needed to make money, but I really like making masks. And now I'm starting to make tool belts because I like the sewing process and I like the fabrics and I'm making tool belts and masks that match and brush rolls. And I feel like this can be a career for me. And I'm going like, first of all, that's amazing. Having a matching mask and a brush roll, that's pretty awesome, right? And I'm going, well, you better make the brush roll cheap enough and make it secure enough because you're going to have to have a lot of brush rolls on these jobs now, right? And she's like, that's exactly what I was thinking. So great, we're talking it through. That's great, but think about it. She's developing something. She's creating something. Connectivity, support, development. If you're developing something, whether it's a, a new part of your business that every, like half of you literally raised your hand about or you're just developing your career, not just developing your career, you're developing your career. 
Maybe you're taking on a new part of the career. Maybe you're looking at esthetician school. Maybe you're starting to do lashes or starting to do brow microblading. Maybe you're um, starting to do hair, motivated by Johnny Lavoie and, and Abby and our styling sessions this month. But you're developing something, right? So this is called forward together, forward together. Who are you telling? Who are you telling? Are you telling your community? Are you telling your family? Telling your husband, telling your wife? Who are you telling? And what are you telling them? Are you telling them, look, I'm making masks and brush rolls. Isn't that cool? Or are you saying, so I don't, you know, I've been doing a lot of research and listening to a lot of experts and I don't know when I'm going to get back to work. I don't know when makeup is going to be my regular revenue again. So I'm finding ways to stay in my industry and create things for my industry that allow me to make revenue until I can get back to work on the level I want to. Well, those are two very different discussions, aren't they? So your husband, wife, friend, buddy, your cousin who doesn't really get how there's a job called makeup artists that get paid to do makeup. They see that and they go, oh my God, I hear you. It's much easier than to say, I support you. I'm gonna support you in that, right? That's the second tier of this whole discussion, support. So if you're telling others, for example, I'm gonna do getting next, but I'm probably gonna do, I keep saying probably because there's a tiny piece of me that doesn't wanna do it. I'm gonna do the getting next as a book, but it's probably gonna be digital. I've been anti-digital book for so long because I want you to have a print piece, but cost and and paper's crazy now and the, all those pieces. And I can do it quicker and I can do it easier digitally. So I might do that. And for me to go, hey guys, I'm doing a book and I'm gonna be digital. And, and somebody goes, oh man, but I love holding 10 words. I love the way it feels in my hand. Oh, I'm disappointed that you're doing it digitally. But if I said, hey guys, listen, you know what? Revenue's been tough. It's cost about 10 grand to 15 grand to publish a book and print it, um, even though I'm doing it myself. And to be honest, I don't have the money, but I don't want to wait till I do. So I want to get it to you sooner. So I'm going to do it digitally. How's that's going to be a different feeling, isn't it? Sorry, I'm going to go in and mute all again. We're doing pretty good guys with you not accidentally unmuting yourself. I'm very impressed today, much better than with V yesterday. Um, but does that make sense guys? It's not about, it's not about the development and just saying, look what I'm doing. It's maybe sharing with your community, with those you're connected to, those who you need support from, here's what I'm doing and here's why I need it. I think we have to think about also, and this gets to that forward together piece, how do we support others? How do we support others during this time? I am very lucky. I have a husband who's got a full-time gig that is a full-time job with benefits and it's, he's knock on wood, been going great. He works with Bakeman 1802, he's a CMO and they make soap and it's, we all need soap. So they're in really good shape, right? They just launched at Ulta.com, if you did not know that. Beekman 1802 lost an enti launched an entire probiotic skincare line at Ulta.com and they're gonna be launching in, in Ulta next month or later this month. So go buy Beekman 1802 so I don't have to stress out about my money. Um, so having said that, um, I'm in a good place. I don't have to stress out that I have somebody to support me with financials and help with the bills and take care of food and all that stuff. Cause I have a husband who's working full time. So I can take the money I've got and be supported back. I can pay artists to do programs with us. I can go online when, when friends that I have are doing, um, selling masks and buy their masks or go online. And when someone says, Hey, I'm creating this, or I'm doing a program, this, um, uh, a woman, uh, Vivian Bond, who is uh, a great transgender performer who's upstate New York. She's doing a gallery show and I'm already messaging the gallery and saying, what's the price? Can I buy these online? I'm tipping my friends who are doing performances online because I can give them 20 bucks. I can afford to give them 20 bucks because I have a little revenue coming in. How are we supporting others in their development? What are we doing now? What can we do now? If we can't afford to tip someone 20 bucks because they're doing Billy Huff, who's, um, if some of you do go to Provincetown with us, some of you know, um, Scream Along with Billy, he's incredible. Every time he's on and he performs every week, I try to jump on and I try to do a tip through Venmo. I want to do what I can because people are creating right now. People are creating. They're creating new ways 
Billy is amazing when you're in a room and you're drunk on gin and you're carrying on and he's at the piano and it's loud and there's a sing along and everybody's carrying on and it's nuts. And it is my favorite thing in Provincetown. Scream along with Billy. He can't do it now. So he's developing other things, right? He's creating. My friend Sherry Vine is uh, Keith Levy doing a whole drag thing online and it's all for tips. Like these are people developing ideas. Nothing to do with makeup. What are you doing out there? What are you doing not only that people can support you in, but how are you also supporting others? Now, and you know how you can support me, right? Come to our free programs. Come to our free programs so that Cinema Secrets and Royal Land Nickel and Scandinavia and Temp2 and Senna Cosmetics are all really happy to see so many people experiencing a program that they help to support and pay for. That's one way. Tell your friends to buy a TPG Pro membership. That's another way. How can I get your support? There's lots of ways, but I tell you already, don't I? Are you telling other people how they can support you? Are you telling other people what things you're doing, what you're creating, what you're developing? We have Taryn D'Onofrio here who is an amazing photographer. And Taryn is really focusing now on her photography. I can't wait. So Taryn says she's doing an online gallery show or an online show or her stuff's available on this website because I'm going to be the first one in line provided it's priced correctly, Taryn. I can help you with that. Um, I'm going to be the first one going, how can I support you? What are you doing? How are you, I hate the word pivoting because it's so used in like a weird way, but how are you shifting? How are you rethinking what you're developing as an artist, what you're developing as a business? And how are you supporting those who are developing also because when I support others and they support me, that makes me feel like we're paying attention to each other, doesn't it? It makes me feel there's connectivity. It makes me feel there's support. It makes me feel I'm developing something. One of the things um, I was gonna to announce today was, um, and I haven't told Deb yet this, and she's one of our sponsors of Industry Intensive, but we had initially said we were gonna push all of our Industry Intensive to 2021 because it just felt like a shit show. And we've had having such a good time and such a nice time doing everything online with you guys. And we don't know what next year is even going to be. And I don't want to wait anymore. So we're going to actually bring industry intensives into 2020 this fall. And we're going to do the industry intensive stage and screen. And we're going to do the industry intensive uh, beauty. And those are both going to be happening this fall. And Kim Jones, I didn't tell that to either yet because I had asked her a while back to be a part of industry intensive. So I'm going to have her nod. At, yes, she's participating. Yes. Okay, good. Awesome. Hi, Thank, you. Thank you, Kim. Hi, so Andrew. I'm developing stuff, even though I can't do what I want to do, I'm developing it how I can. So what I want you guys to stop, you know, when we first started talking about goals and developing things and supporting each other in this, a lot of people were going to do online lessons. Everyone's going to do remote bridal lessons and all this stuff. So I'm going to ask you, I don't need to raise a hand. I don't need anything. I know you've all been very busy on Zoom. I know you've all been incredibly busy taking programs, learning things, going to art school, going to music school, going to TPG school, doing all this stuff. I know you've been busy, but have you stopped developing newness? Have you stopped developing things that are gonna carry you forward? Are you relying on things getting back to what you used to be doing? Are you relying on those clients just lining back up again? with the same rate they had. They don't, by the way, have the rate anymore. They're not gonna have the same rate. So even if you had every client you got, you have less revenue. So if you spent the last four months keeping motivated, keeping inspired, paying attention, really working hard on, on moving forward, setting goals, but you haven't developed any alternative. You haven't developed any alternative. You haven't developed the thing you're going to also do. The thing you're going to also do. Think about it that way. And then going back to support and going back to connectivity because we're going forward together, right? We're going forward together. One of the things I think is really important here is that we share our ideas and our thoughts. We share what we're developing. We share what we're doing. And one of the things I think is that is really important is that we are being very conscious of our current circumstances, very conscious of what the future is or may not be. And we're basing all of our 
decision making right now in how we develop our career forward. And listen, I'm doing this in business evolution right now. We're thinking very clearly about that. Anyone who does BE online with me knows we have been fo focusing on that's good, but can you do that during a pandemic? That's good, but what are you going to do if those roles aren't there? That that's good, but we're not going backwards. We're going forward, guys. And those BE groups are going forward together. You're going forward together. Um, being based in reality is a critical factor in development. Being based in reality. I'm going to use Despina Scandales for a minute, for an example. She is an amazing esthetician, amazing makeup artist. She has her own um, in-home spa that she uh, works with clients in. And Despina might have had a plan to open a spa with with six stations and she's going to rent a place and uh where she's based and all this and if that was and it's not a, a plan she's talked to me about but i'm just saying it out loud if she, she's making that as her next goal i think that that's a little crazy she's not being realistic about what things are happening right now is she but if she says oh well here's what i've done I've actually made shifts and changes to do this. I'm actually raising my prices a little, becoming more exclusive, having a whole series of things that I'm taking care of for each of my clients, one-on-one. -on -one. I take no more than three a day. That is development. That is creating a real reality-based, rational idea of what she's doing next because she understands that to go into a business that may have been her dream six months ago does not necessarily work today. And so if she is sharing with Priya Maharaj, another TPG Pro team member, and she goes, I'm so excited to do this. And Priya sits there going like, oh my God, how do I tell her this is the craziest idea? What is she thinking? How can you support someone if they're not based in reality? You feel like a bad friend if you say, no, nah, babe, not a great idea. Have you thought about this? I know you're such a negative person. You don't ever believe in me. That's not what this is. It's about reality. So ask yourself, can this work? Or be open when you're sharing and developing ideas and working with others to help you execute. Give yourself that openness and going, am I create? Does this make sense? And be open to hearing if it doesn't. I don't have any problem telling y'all when that sound doesn't make sense. Y'all know that. That's my, again, it's my job, right? It's my job is to tell people if something makes sense or not and help them shift things to make it make sense. It's my job. Your colleague, it's not their job. Your friend, it's not their job. But right now we're all going through this idea, right? And this whole session is called Forward Together. I don't care, I don't mean forward as 70 people. I mean forward together with a person or people or multiple different relationships that move forward together individually from each other. Just not being on your own, trying to do it all, trying to figure it out, trying to make sense of it without support. That's what Forward Together is about. So last thing, execution, execution. So we can have all the connections as we want. We can have all the support. We can be very supported. We can have great ideas that we're developing. We're being realistic. But how many of us have great ideas, support, and connectivity, and have ideas that we've done nothing about yet? Raise your hand, because I have. I've got ideas I've done nothing with yet. In fact, I'm raise two hands, because I've got that many ideas. I've got two hands up. I've got that many fucking ideas that I have done nothing with yet. So no execution yet. No execution. So let me ask you a question. Am I not executing because I don't have time? Because I have time for a cocktail. We all know I have time for gin. Um, are we not having, um, I'm not executing because I don't have the money? Well, no, a lot of the things I'm trying to accomplish don't take a whole lot of money because I'm no longer traveling for them. If I have to pay for a space and pay for artists to travel, I mean, think about the Artist Summit. Incredibly expensive to produce that program. Couldn't do it this year, but we could do something online, right? Very inexpensive to produce the Artist Summit online. Don't think I'm not thinking about it for 2021 if this shit keeps up. So one of the things I want to talk about is, and this is a real quick one, because all you got to do is make some action happen. Make some action happen. If you 
start, I mean, there, again, there, how many cliches are there about this, right? Every journey starts with one step. How many cliches can we come up with about the fact that just, I mean, I mean, Nike built a business on it, right? Just do it. Just do it. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Just do it. Um, I've got a list. Those of you who've taken our in-person business evolution program know I do a, 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 an exercise with um, post-it notes. We don't do that on BE Online because this was not quite as effective without the space. Um, but I have a lot of post-it notes posted places. But the problem is those are post-it notes and those are notes and those are things in my phone that are to remind me to take action. But what happens if we just see that same thing every day and we just, what? It just becomes wallpaper, right? Those post-its or the note you leave for yourself becomes wallpaper because you just don't even see it anymore. It becomes part of what the table looks like. So if you've got support and you've shared with someone or someone's what you're developing, what you're doing, what you're thinking is going to be your next and you ask them to hold you accountable, well, that's one more person trying to make sure you start that process, take that first step. So there's three questions I want you to ask yourself with regard to execution. One is, what am I doing every day? What am I doing every day to start moving this forward? Um, my cousin and I had, uh, she's down in, um, where was she when we had this conversation? I don't remember where we were, whether we were in, oh, Austin. She was in Austin at the time. We had this conversation. She's starting a business and um, she works for a, a big organization. She's starting this business and we had a whole dinner. And, you know, of course, again, she's telling me what she's doing. And I put my coaching hat on and I go, sorry, stop. I'm stopping myself. And she goes, no, please. Like, I'd love to hear what you have to do. You've built a business that's lasted 17 years and through all kinds of shit. I was like, yeah, um, just take 10 minutes every day. And she goes, yeah, but I can't accomplish any, what am I going to accomplish in 10 minutes? I said, nothing, but you're going, but you add up 10 minutes times six days and you've accomplished an hour worth of work. And if you set aside 10 minutes every single day, I'm almost hundred percent sure you're going to spend 15 or 20 or 30 once you get that 10 minutes going. So if you put 10 minutes on your calendar every day, but just for fun, don't block anything else off. Don't block anything, book anything within an hour of that. So 10 AM is your time. 10 a.m. is your 10 minutes. Set your phone for 10 minutes and start working on that project. I don't care if you only give yourself that 10 minutes and you stop mid-sentence when you're writing something out when 10 minutes is done because that's all you've got because you're homeschooling and you're half schooling and you're having to go to work and you're having to take care of food and you're doing all this crazy stuff and you're buying masks. So you only have 10 minutes. I don't care if you just do 10 minutes, stop at 10 when that alarm goes off and go back to it tomorrow and pick it up where you left it off and take 10 minutes again. Or if you take 30 or 40 or two hours one day, if you take 10 minutes, if you do something every day, at the very least, what will happen is it will stick in your head, it will stay there, it will always be there. Second question is, how am I connecting every day about this project, about this execution? What am I saying to someone? What am I sharing? Who am I telling it to? And the third thing is, how am I doing that same thing for someone else or, or someone else's, multiple someone's? Let me explain something. I am so proud of, I, as I look at this session and see who's here, I, I mean, there's some new faces and thank you for being a part of what we do at the Powder Group. Some I'm just getting to know um, and some that I've known for so long, they feel like family, they are family. It's not about feeling like family, you're family to me. And I am so proud of all that you do to support each other. I don't think you always ask for support back. And I think that to find a way to do that in a way that allows you, because you're so supportive, because you're showing that you want to help someone else execute their ideas, you help someone else feel supported. You help someone else develop ideas that they need to bounce something off of you. When you make it about them and not about you, the, 
the natural flow is that when I feel supported, I want to support back. When I feel that you are doing something to help me move forward, develop an idea, execute an idea, the more likely I am going to be that to want to push back into your world and insist upon supporting you, even if you're not asking for the support. So I'm going to wrap it there because I promised myself I wouldn't go past quarter after, but I want to review again, connectivity, support, development, and execution. Those are the four. Those are the four. The whole idea here, this session is called Forward Together, that this is not about you doing this on your own. It's not only about you supporting others. If you're that person who just does it automatically, it's about you asking for and receiving support. And it's not just about receiving support if you're that person who is always taking more than you're, you think you're able to give. Because maybe you think, well, what am I going to help? How am I going to help them? I just started out. How am I going to help them? What do I know? That's important, guys. It's really important. So with that, I'm going to say thank you for being with me for the first part of today. Um, I think most of you are joining us in 45 minutes at two o'clock. Just as a reminder, I am not going to be shutting down this link. So if you just want to turn your camera off and, and all that and just stay in your spot, you can do that. If you want to keep it zoomed on all day, it will stay live. I'm going to shut mine off. You'll see the little TPG logo there so that you don't have to watch me eating more salmon. Um, and that's it for now. So again, thank you guys for being with me. I appreciate you greatly. Uh, and if you've got questions about this or anything else, feel free to shoot me a note, support each other, make sure you're asking support and uh, let's move forward together. Okay. Thanks guys.